the final episode one month earlier. Please be students. No. <laughs> Give me a taste. One last taste. I'm too late. No one he is there. Come in. If only someone had been strong enough to What's stop in the bag? Sooner. Those poor citizens might what have is in the bag? I don't... It's... What is it? I'm not sold that this is actually him. Good, because it's not him. What did you do, Hawks? This fake best genius death would be more impactful if I actually believed it was real. But lucky for me, I have a very, very refined sense of denial. So, I just, no. I don't know what happened to him, but I'm sure later on, I guess in season 6, we'll be able to tie up that loose thread. They've got an army of soldiers united under one cause. They've got an army of Shigaraki. Control over communication networks. And twice. And Ryan communication, yes. Big player in the hero industry. And that. And there are likely other high-end Nomus around. And the Nomus. Unleashed. And a lot of other stuff. Do they even need to be in hiding at this point? You look happy, number two. Up to something? Nah, man. I was just waiting for you. No, nah, it's cool, bro. <laughs> Everything's cool. Scenes. I'm not panicking. To get the full picture and alert Endeavor and the others before things are too far gone. Before they're too far gone. Before they're too far gone, you say. This show could go on for 45 seasons. Like, we're still only in Japan. Sometimes I reflect on that. It's true that I'm no longer forced to use cheap tricks. But look, my arm is ravaged. This is from using my ability once. Another parallel with Deku. Though our minds are adaptable and expansive, our hardware can't evolve fast enough to keep up with such power. I have observed this progression, and I call it the Quirk Singularity. No one took my research this again. seriously. Except all for one, of course. How long will this take, Doc? He's ready to go. He's geared up. For the next four months, your life will be one of hell. What am I looking at? He goes into an egg? When you come out on the other side, is this literal? Side, the world <laughs> oh, will what? Be in the palm of your hand. This is a metaphor, right? <laughs> this is the surgery. <laughs> that power was the only one that didn't end up going to plan. It's not all right. Don't even lie. Stop. I'm gonna cut you off right there. <laughs> I think this is one of my favorite openings song-wise, but I think the weird thing about it is it's so out of place in terms of what's happening in the, the latter part of this season. But I guess it's part of its genius too, because watching the intro and seeing early season five, or early second half of season five, I thought this is what it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be the kids training, which is a reasonable assumption given, you know, everything that came before. And it was that a little bit, but it wasn't enough <laughs> given what came after that. Yes, the Caruso. Tell them about the Caruso. It runs around so fast. It goes round and round, merry-go-round. Yeah, that means a lot more now. It's a hell of a lot more. Yeah, it's there, actually, on second watch. The present. Please be kids. Kids? Yes. What a relief. You kids are doing great. You need to work harder. <laughs> you need to work a lot harder. We don't really have high expectations of you, but do your best. But I like how they're forming a, this awesome tag team. <laughs> These robots and their sentience. If this show goes on long enough, there will be a robot arc at some point. They have obviously improved. Now show me what the rest <laughs> of you have learned. Got it! Ojiro and Sato. Their work study was with lion hero Shishido. Number 13 on the yeah. chart. This is all great. This is this is great. It's not enough. It's not enough. It all is different now. And there will be no being ready until it happens, I feel like. It's gonna be one of those things. Jiro and Shoji. Work study with killer whale. Hey, what an honor. I'm never looking confident. They're starting to use team attacks more, which is really exciting. I'd love to see more of this. The potential is unlimited, honestly. Coda. Work study with laundry. The washing machine wash. dude, yeah. <laughs> on the chart. It's yeah, it's fascinating that he's number eight. I would love to see him in action. Make my opponent lose the will to fight super quick. With these whiny robots, I don't think that's gonna be that hard. Teamwork. And we've seen their internship. And decisiveness. And killing. Calculation and efficiency. I'm glad she bounced back from that loss. This gift. <laughs> my DNA. <laughs> what a perfect look back on this final episode. Look back at the beach it feels that started like it all. So long ago. It does. It really does. You don't look back it's been a wonderful ride. Anymore, do you? It's so much has happened. So much has changed. It's really worked on that whip. Keep going, young man. That's when the real fun begins. When you can do it yourself. <laughs> Those loving eyes. That's respect right there. The high, deep blue sky. 
And that's honestly been one of the best things about the relationship by far is that the mentor people thing is there and that's great. But there's another element there too entirely, which is that they're friends. You know, they're friends despite their status difference. They feel like peers or even family in their interactions. I really love the relationship. And that's it. Another thing that's terrifying me right now. Like everything I'm seeing, I wanted to go back and we went back, but it's different now. I feel like I'm being set up. Like this might be one of the last moments like this in a while. In a way, their progress is dangerous because they're like riding a high and they're not accurately evaluating the risk to give credit to Aizawa's ideology. You know, there's a danger to being comfortable, but no, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm gonna enjoy these moments while they last. You helped me so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, please, that's ancient history, okay? Plus, look. I totally forgot about it. Put in my costume. Except for this costume adjustment that I made. What does Sakura think about the fact that she designed her costume for him? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Fist bump. That's something. <laughs> that's something. Baby steps. I'm sorry. I couldn't figure everything out. But you have to keep moving forward. And what did that say? Previous successor quirks. Yeah, I'm curious what else he's gonna be able to do. When it comes to Black Whip, I can only maintain the power for about one second so far. One second? You haven't had any contact with the past users since last time? No. See, he pretends he's not interested, but... So it's no wonder I haven't heard of these nobodies. Huh? What are you talking about? Their powers are amazing! Yeah, cause from the perspective of a loser like you, any quirk is amazing! That's mean. You know how to hit me where it hurts. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Weird. The past users entrusted this power to the future, adding to its legacy. They weren't chosen ones. They were just the people who received uh -huh. the power. I guess it was slim picking. It's interesting. Passed it on in a fight that kept repeating. Whoever was around, they made the most of it, and those times might be starting again. The next power you should manifest is float. Float. You can already fly. Ability. <laughs> That's what it was. A new ability, and from Nana Shimura. And very timely. Really? You think you could take me away from me, Sparky? I'll murder you. Uh, he's a total. He's really opening up. The more you help, the sooner you eat. Judging by past group activities, I feel like Baka goes the one ends up cooking in this situation. We can put whatever we like in the pot. What a delightful dish! Oh, is it shabu shabu? What would it mean twice about tea leaves? What fool cut the chives? Yeah, see? <laughs> it just took over. Did he ever get that recipe? The long-awaited work-study exchange and starting the term off with a bang hot pot party is ready to begin. Hot pot. Let's eat up. Last meal. Nothing like a hot pot when it's cold outside. <laughs> I was legit a hot pot addict in China. Second year. And shabu shabu addict these days in Korea. Don't sweat it. I'm kind of worried too, Minetta. Sometimes I'm suddenly overwhelmed with reality. I can't yeah. believe how my life has changed. Yeah. Speaking of reality. Or that I'd be able to talk, um, I guess sorta of normally with Kachan. Right? That's a huge surprise. I can't believe I'm so lucky. Midoriya. Take it all in. The Ponzo. Oh, sorry! The Ponzo can wait. <laughs> We're having a moment. <laughs> my plan is to start a formal training this week. I'll help you. Better be nice. There's a power team right there. Something wrong? Something's on his mind. I decided to keep on living. Mm -hmm. Thing is, how do I put this? I feel so powerless. Huh, interesting. It's kind of a relief to hear him say that. You defended us almost on your own for decades. So yeah, I'm sure it's hard to come down from that high. <laughs> That's a little harsh. I love his dynamic. But you are still able to help them. Right, let him know. It means so much more coming from Aizawa too. <laughs> wow. Don't apologize for being alive. Thanks. When Aizawa gets to be there for the Mighty All Might, that was unexpected and amazing. It's really touching to see him break down like that because I feel like there just wasn't time to process it. He had one of the most unbelievable last stands of all time, went out or lost his powers the way he lived as like this ultimate hero. And then just like that, his legacy as I am here, world's strongest, world's most reliable All Might in a very significant way came to an end. And you can imagine that that's not all that's catching up to him. It's like his whole life that's catching up to him. When did he ever stop or slow down? You know, speaking of always be accelerating, it's represented by the fact that he suffered intense physical damage that left him in this perpetually weakening state. But I feel like there's probably a parallel there emotionally as well. Like you don't live that way without feeling the costs. But there are just so many beautiful things about the way it worked out. The fact that he saw it through to the end. The fact that his legacy set the stage for the next legacy to begin. I mean, the fact that Deku doesn't look back anymore is a testament to Almighty's greatness to how, how well he did it how well he chose that's what you want in that kind of relationship right like the real stuff happens once the student 
is off on their own and is able to do the work themselves. That's ultimate success. And not just Deku, there's no one in this school or perhaps hero in this world that hasn't been influenced by the greatness that is All Might. And so it would almost feel frustrating or incomplete if he wasn't able to be the recipient of that in some regard. And so it's such a great feeling having the students carry on like that and having someone like Aizawa be there consoling him in a moment where the grief or loss or frustration finally hits him. It makes it greater to me, not lesser, that he's human because it means he was able to do all these amazing things despite his inherent weakness, you know, his frailty. I'm sure part of it is bittersweet too because he is watching the students enjoy relative peace and that's largely a peace that he built. You know, he remembers. He remembers the time when it wasn't like this. And I feel like that's something you only really know or really understand if you've experienced it. And so the kids won't know until they know. And he's given them that luxury. You know, it's going to come back around and, you know, the darkness is obviously going to start, but he's provided such a great gift and the rest is just like faith that the ripples of his life and his actions will continue in that direction, even if there are ebbs and flows. And it will. I mean, the kids are going to struggle and the next season or two or whatever is going to be painful, but it will all come full circle again. I think a big part of All Might's arc is a sort of letting go and having faith in others that they can do what he did at both the level of his students, but also society at large, that he was the support structure that got everyone to a level where they could stand on their own two feet. And now that that's happened, the world will forever be better because of it. Hopefully, the young heroes will have time to mature. Until then, I'll gather intel. There's not enough and learn time. everything about the Liberation War. X Day will be here soon. <gasps> no, that's it? I thought there was more time left. Oh man, it hurts. It stings. Sad. It's sad on multiple levels. It's sad because I feel like things may never be the same again. But also because it's the end of My Hero Academia until I guess the fall. I've been so used to it as part of my life part of my routine. Man, what a journey it's been. Why does it feel like this season was one of the longest? Like, uh, I think just so many things happened, so many things changed. Here we go. It says we have an expeditionary operation. So like a work field trip? Now hold on, for real? That's weird. Same for us. Our agency too. It's happening again. Didn't this happen in season four? They're being assembled, right? There's the Endeavor doll. Who is this kid? And the harrowing incident that would shake superhuman society was about to begin. We're really here. We're like on the doorstep of this event. Ah, oh, it's over. Can't wait. It's hard to bear the thought that this is the last episode for now. The only consolation I have is that it will be back eventually. But I don't know. I feel like this show has become a part of me. It's amazing because I really had no expectations of the show at all. I didn't know anything about it before I got voted in on Patreon, other than it was a superhero show. But it just turned out to be so much more. I mean, the quirk stuff and the heroic stuff, it's cool, of course. And there's just some amazing action sequences. But for me, it's this golden ideal of the person that I want to be. And I think in whatever small way I'm capable of, it's changed the way I think and it's changed the way I act. Sometimes I get this question, like, how have these shows changed our life? And I can't really understate the impact they have on me. You know, you know, the, the fact that I'm watching them and reflecting on them and getting the opportunity to engage with the ideas of the show and articulate them in a way that I can look at them and reflect on them, it cuts deep. And even when I'm not filming, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it all the time. You know, every time I do something that doesn't feel satisfying or every time I have a fear or a doubt, every time I feel myself getting tired, every time I feel myself losing faith, all I have to do is think about this show and think about the characters and it immediately takes me out of it or it helps me get through whatever it is until I get to a better place. This show is like a light. You know, the characters are like a light that shine on, on the darkness where there's no excuses for me anymore. More. There's no hiding from the glory that these characters possess, you know? Like, just thinking about All Might, he'll literally fight to his last breath as he's coughing blood even though he's expecting to die, and will still have the presence of mind to think about others and be an inspiration to them. The fact that Deku, and all the kids in UA for that matter, see every obstacle and every defeat as an opportunity and something to be joyful about. They very rarely, and if they do it's temporary, spiral into these self-defeating thoughts of, I'm not worthy. Or if they do, it's fuel, it's not an obstacle. They're the epitome of, like, taking negativity or taking set backs and putting it behind you and using it as fuel. I think it's helped me become more cognizant of my thoughts and therefore has given me the ability to sort of like reprogram or challenge things that otherwise would have stopped me. You know, there have been times in the past where if I'm taking on something that's a little bit too big, you know, or poses some kind of emotional risk in some way. A lot of times those thoughts would be fatal for whatever that endeavor was. You know, it's like I would give so much emotional weight to those thoughts. Like if I felt panicked about something, it would create the spiral where I could find all these reasons that seem logical on the surface, why certain things were impossible or why I couldn't do them. But I think I've gotten better at challenging them. You know, I think I've gotten better at asking myself, is this the way I want to think about it? Is this the heroic way to think about it? You know, what is the way I could think about it that would make me feel good and powerful? And with that thought, I can almost always find something better. For example, if I had thoughts like this thing is going to fail 
fail. That will then spiral into, well, if this fails, then I lose everything. And if I have everything, I'll never come back. And things will just tunnel into catastrophe. And there have been a lot of times in my life where that was it. That, that was the end of the assessment and the end of the endeavor. But I think the show has trained me to sort of question that and reject those instincts a little bit and to be more responsible for my own thoughts about it and to be more active in shaping how I want to think about it. So instead of like, this is going to fail and that is going to lead to a succession of failures that will ultimately be devastating. Now it's more like, yeah, there are a lot of things out of my control and very good chance that things crumble around me because that's just life. You know, things are difficult and things come toppling down from time to time. But as things fall down, I will still be there standing. It will never be because I gave up. It will never be because I quit on myself. It will not be because I didn't have vision and it will definitely not be because I compromised myself on what I believe in. And even if the specific specifics of the things I want do not come to pass, I will still be there fighting and I will make it work. Like I will make things happen and I will get what I need from the world. And I will do so in a way that I feel is ethical and that is kind and compassionate and open-minded. It will never end because I quit. I will just keep forging that path. And as soon as I have that thought, the tone completely changes. It's a mixture of peace, but also adrenaline. And there's a clarity and strength there because I think what it is is in some way taking power back from the randomness of life and circumstance and taking responsibility for my own self and my own desires and what I do from one moment to the next. And it will be a struggle. I mean, all things in life, especially great things are a struggle, but the tone has changed where it's not this life-threatening or emotionally threatening thing. It's an opportunity to be somebody that I respect, you know, to be someone that I admire. And that makes it less of a burden and more of a joy. It's like I get to strive for something beautiful. And what greater vision is there in terms of self-identity? You know, what greater connection is there to life than striving for an ideal that is inspiring? And I think I owe a lot of that thinking to the show. I mean, it's hard to find better role models than All Might. And by extension, everyone who follows All Might in their various ways and methods. One of the ways the show is so spectacular is that it really is an ensemble. Deku is obvious showrunner, but then there's also Mirio. You know, there's Aizawa, who's the same thing with sort of a different focus. There's Bakugo, even in his really gruff way. There's Kirishi I mean, the list goes on and on. And it's one of those things for me where once you see it, you can't unsee it. It keeps popping up because I'm spending so much time with the show. I'm spending so much time talking about the show. And while it's going to be a long process and I'm very, very far from getting anywhere close to that ideal, it's something I can't unsee now. It's something that is there. It comes up constantly because I'm spending so much time thinking and reflecting and talking about the show. There's a line, I think it's from season four, and I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's something to the effect of if I can't save, I think it's Eri, or if I can't save an innocent child, how can I even call myself a hero? I've taken that and repurposed it as a joke, you know, for really mundane things like if I don't meddle in everyone's business, can I even call myself a hero? Or if I can't sift through 300 show recommendations to make a Patreon poll, can I even call myself a hero? But Jokes aside, I feel like that's such a, a great way to think about it. Like once I see something that I identify as being an action or a trait that's connected to the person I want to be, if I don't do it, can I say that I'm being who I want to be? Can I say that I'm living up to my own expectations? And while I think it's really important to leave room for imperfection and occasional failures, I think just having that as a guiding star is a powerful force. And, you know, even the, the characters themselves, in their own eyes, they fail very often, but that's just more fuel, you know, it's just more feedback. And they see it as part of a larger process towards this goal. And it just feels good. It just feels good to think that that way. If you had asked me years ago, I would have thought that that was sort of delusional, that it was this weird sort of optimism, you know? But the more I think about it, the more I realize that there's a choice in the matter. And it's the opposite of delusion. It's accepting the burden of one's own life. So in other words, in case this isn't clear, I really love this show. I adore it. I'm so happy that this won the poll. It's been such a beautiful surprise and it continues to surprise. And I'm glad for that strength because we're going to need it going into season six, I think. <laughs> it's also crazy because this is the longest show I've ever done. And just how much my own life has changed since I started. Like when I started My Hair Academia, I was living in my mom's basement, <laughs> speaking of cliches, sort of isolated and not having any idea of what the future would look like, having canceled all my plans. And here I am back abroad living what is, I would say, a solid life, you know, where I'm enjoying myself and I'm out in the world and I'm able to work hard and have fun. And I'm continuing to challenge myself, and continuing to dream and continuing to push myself. And so my life will forever be connected to these five seasons. And of course, to all of you for watching, because it wouldn't have been as special if I'd done it on my own. I would not have gotten this out of it if I was just watching this at home. It's because I have you guys. It's because I get to talk to you about it. It's because even if it's not a direct one-to-one -one thing, it's a conversation. It's a dialogue. It's an ongoing thing. It's not only my thoughts, but it's your thoughts as well, helping me see things in ways I had never anticipated or would have totally missed on my own. And also for the feeling of community that I feel has been so strong throughout the duration of these five seasons. People who have been there for most or even all of the videos. And obviously to all patrons who make this possible and who <laughs> believe in me and like put up with my craziness and are there for me day in and day out, month after month. So a huge, huge thank you to everybody. It's been an amazing ride and it's going to be super, super exciting when the show picks up again. I just know it. So yeah, that is the end of My Hair Academia season five and the show for now. But of course, as usual, there is a Q&A coming up, so I will see you very soon for that.